Hey guys, this is your inspirational nurse under um, so our interior coming to you live with another great video. Hello, all my YouTube family out there. Your girl's currently on her fourth day of vacation. I'm currently in the mountains and Poconos, and y'all do not come out here, y'all. Literally, the government just shut down like three days ago. So shout out to Camelback for accommodating us and updated our suite or the presidential suite. Um, it is some good in this pandemic as far as healthcare workers getting things for free or upgrades or just people just shouting out, uh, thank you for your service, which sounds so foreign because I'm like, this is what I do for a living. It just kind of feels weird when someone say, but I appreciate it. And thank you all for your services that's currently still on the front line. Um, I'm currently, again, I'm at the Camelback Mountain Resort. I took my family out. I wanted to do a mountain getaway, um, just kind of chill, fireplace, nice room. Um, the kids went, had a good time. We went ziplining and we went on a mountain coaster ride, FYI. But anyway, today's video is going to be super special, super fast, and it's basically tips and tricks on how to treat chest pains. Um, I wanted to do this video because recently I had a patient that had chest pain um, and I was working with another off going nurse and she did not know exactly what to do, um, which I was kind of shocked, but then I'm not shocked because I realized that everyone is being trained differently. Um, and a lot of, and during this pandemic, we guys, we have to realize that, um, we have to be sensitive to the fact that med surge is not currently just a med surge floor anymore. Um, in the pandemic med surge is now your ICU patients, your cardiac patients, it could be any type of patient, psych, um, neuro, uh, all types of things, vascular, surgical patients, pregnant patients, uh, teenagers, everybody is on the med surge unit. So for the shout out to my med surge nurses out there, it is so much work um, working in these times with several sick people. Um, I don't think sometimes people understand how hard it is until you're kind of like in the shoes of those nurses that work those floors. So anyway, let's talk about chest pain. So I'm currently on a cardiac unit. So most of our causes of chest pains will be a lot of the, your new AFib diagnosis, um, patients not taking their medications. And that's why it's super important guys to get your history um, before you start contacting doctors and make sure you have your facts. Um, and that will give us evidence and reason to go ahead and test, right? We just don't wanna do stuff for a patient just because, right? So chest pains, it can be very, very scary. I know some people have probably came across tons of chest pains, but not every chest pain is the same. Um, not every patient responds to chest pain the same way. Um, and the reason why I say that is I had patients in the past that didn't physically tell me like, okay, this is chest pain. Some patients don't know exactly what it is. They just know they have this pressure or this heaviness or tightness or whatever, sharp pain. And some patients, I had a patient even call it a twins. I thought it was super cute, but I had paid attention to her body language because she was elderly and she didn't say the word chest pain. Cause sometimes guys, when you're working, on a med surge unit or a non-specialty non unit, um, you may not always see chest pain or cardiac issues unless you're on a cardiac floor um, where you get tons of cardiac issues, right? So chest pain can be something scary because I, as you know, chest pains is acute, sometimes is onset, and some patients have chronic chest pains. But most of the times it's your acute chest pains that be the most scariest because they come out of nowhere. All of a sudden your patient is fine. Next thing you know, your patient is not fine and they're under a lot of distress and they're grimacing and they're holding their chest. Um, those are always pay attention to tip number one, will be always pay attention to body language. Um, do not wait till the chest pains get out of control and uncontrolled. Um, always while the patient is going, you know, is starting to feel these pains to stay calm. Um, when you start to freak out, they start to freak out. Um, this is not a good time to say, well, yeah, you know, I think she's having this or that's not your job to diagnose your patients. Your job is to uh, grab, gather the facts, assess, and get that information to the doctor um, and let them um, figure it out. Um, another tip is 
to constantly look at their history. Now, sometimes patients come into the hospital and their histories literally are like top to bottom of the screen of the computer. They have so much history. And I always look at the lipid stuff like the cholesterol and, 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 and I also look at the medications or if they have cardiac history, AFib or um, things like that. And if I don't see any of that, I always ask what has changed. Um, and when you're doing your assessment with a chest pain patient, their anxiety is going to increase and go through the roof. And they're gonna either scream at you and say, do something, do something. Or um, it's bearable to the fact that they can actually answer these questions while I have chest pain. Um, it's good to, another tip is it's good to use your hospital's um, assessment um, flow sheets. Now, when we chart, we chart in our flow sheets. And so this is super helpful when charting chest pains because you can get more information out of these flow sheets rather than trying to think of every question to ask your patient. You need to just get to the meat and potatoes, as my husband said, get to the meat and potatoes. You need to get to your meat and potatoes um, when you're trying to assess chest pains and you need to move quickly. Um, and most of the time, these patients that's having these chest pains, they're already on oxygen because they have some type of cardiac history or they're currently not. And if they're having chest pains, they're not getting too much O2. So if they're also having shortness of breath, I will go ahead and apply my two liters of oxygen at this time. And I'm asking questions. And some of the questions off our flow sheets are like, is the pain uh, from one to 10? Is the pain heavy, sharp, pressure, um, um, tightness? And this is, I literally go down and have them describe this pain because some patients do not know how to describe the pain that they're feeling. All they know is that it hurts and it's in their chest and they're super scared. And you gotta remember the times that we're in. Another question that's on our flow sheets is to ask if the, if the chest pains radiate anywhere else. Now, when it comes to men and women, chest pains sometimes present very, very differently. For women, sometimes I see most of the time when they have cardiac history or cardiac related issues, these pains tend to radiate to their arms, shoulder, back, or they have these weird shoulder pains, back pains. Uh, weird pains that indicate something major is going on. I caught an uh, internal bleeding before during the MRT. Well, not even before MRT, but I caught it before my patient walked out the hospital door. I would never forget my patient for four hours and I worked on her. She was internally bleeding, but she had a right weird shoulder pain. And I was just like, this is not matching what is going on. Literally, she's walking, she's talking, she's fine, but she's just having a shoulder pain. Weird, why shoulder pain? You understand what I'm saying? So the weirder it is, I don't know about me, what's gonna happen in my future, but I do know guys that I love to investigate. I love to find out, okay, what is going on with my patient? Like, why is she having shoulder pain? Like, this doesn't make sense. So anyway, but right now I'm just my med surgeon nurse, but anyway, uh, you definitely wanna ask those questions and get your information. If they're unable to tell you, just look at their body language. Again, their body language will tell you everything. If they're holding, they're grimacing, they're holding their mid chest. Ask them, is it the middle of your chest? Is it the right side of your chest? Is it the left side of your chest? Because some patients may be going through heart failure or their heart failure may be progressing worse. And is it the right side of heart failure, left side of heart failure? Like it's so many diagnoses. When we're talking about chest pain, it's just a common symptom of something major going on, right? In that moment. Now, another thing you want to quickly do is you want to look at your PRN orders. You got your information. You might have nitro. You might have uh, something to ease the chest pains, but it's not going to resolve the chest pains. It's just going to give them some relief. And during this time, you definitely want to go ahead and give your first nitro. Now, when you give your nitro, you want to get your vitals before and after you give that nitro within five to 10 minutes. Um, I, when I'm, here's a hint, when I'm given a nitro, I automatically connect my patient up to a vital signs machine and let it continuously run. And I can see if there's any difference in blood pressure, heart rate, because nitro does affect these vital signs. And so you're supposed to give nitro five minutes apart. It's sublingual, meaning it goes underneath their tongue and it just sits there. And sometimes it does not work. Now, guys, we're not going to wait to try to do five nitros. We're going to, soon as you're going to give anything, you need to be already paging your doctor and saying, hey, patient is having chest pains. 
this is how the pain feels this is the level of the pain they have prn orders i already gave one nitro uh another tip is go ahead and automatically uh, grab your ekg machine um some hospital protocols allow you to put this order in yourself as an rn um to go ahead and put your ekg order in to grab that because that's going to be the number one thing if you do call the mrt which is an emergency team that comes by the bedside normally those are your icu nurses your respiratory team every team that comes by the bedside they're going to ask for your ekg they're going to ask for the patient's history you do not want to be fumbling around trying to learn your patients you should have learned your patients on that initial visit when you are um you know making your hourly rounds or when you initially came to see the patient in the morning um you need to know your patient if they went down for any surgical procedures um image like if they had a ct or x-ray chest x-ray you can already pull those images up of their results and they, they, can, they can look at it to say oh this patient may have ammonia da, da, da. it's a lot of maybes the doctors still need to be known of everything that you do to the patient because they are the doctor um, you do not want to wait last minute to tell your doctor that, hey, your patient was having this. I think that's a little unfair. Um, and it's a lot going on when it's chest pains. But when you have more than one chest pains, you, you move faster and faster each time. And um, you'll go ahead and say, if you know your doctor that you're working with and you know how they are, you can say, hey, do you want me to put in for uh, lipid panels or a cardiac workup? Um, and so that way they may say, yeah, go ahead and drop and get a CK and B or get a troponin level stat, you know, and that way you can go ahead and get those cardiac enzyme levels to see if the cardiac muscles have been damaged. Okay. So we're gathering, still gathering information on the patient. Meanwhile, your patient may have some relief from nitro and they may not. I'd had a recent chest pain that my patient had chest pain that was unresolved no matter what we did but my doctor worked we worked very well together um the nurse off going she had no clue she was like i gave this and gave that i didn't know what else to do oh my gosh she just having these chest pains i don't know what to do and it's your patient now and i'm like first of all that's unacceptable anytime you have an unstable patient i don't care if you're off going nurse you should never transfer an unstable patient to another nurse um especially a day shift nurse day shift not saying because you know guys i was night shift nurse for a long time but day shift is crazy times 10 and we don't have the time to sit there trying to resolve something that could have maybe got resolved while you was there at least page the doctor the nurse did not even page the doctor um and i was very disappointed and i just let that nurse know that this is unacceptable um you will be calling your doctor you will be going to grab the ekg machine and you will be going in here to do these labs with me you are not going home and living me with an unstable an unresolved chest pains um when i met the patient she was sweet as pie just in so much pain so much distress um, the doctor was able to put in another verbal order, guys. Now, if it's an emergency, based on your hospital policies, you can put in verbal orders for certain medications. I do not do it if it's not an emergency. Um, and the doctors can't do anything to you. They can't write you up and say, oh, well, she didn't put my order in. If it's not an emergency, you do not have to put their verbal orders in. They have to put their orders in. Um, but if it's an emergency, you can go ahead and put the orders in. I already increased my patient's oxygen. Just know that oxygen is a medicine. So it's supposed to go to only two liters and then you need an order for three and above based on your hospital policy. Some people think oxygen solves everything when they think of chest pains, but sometimes it really makes things worse if you increase it too quickly. Um, but you also wanna, if you're gonna assess your cardiac patient, if they're having cardiac issues, you also wanna assess their respiratory issues to see because they go together. You wanna make sure that they're not in shortness of breath. According to the night shift nurse, she was not having any shortness of breath, just cardiac, and it was both. It was shortness of breath, unresolved chest pains, uh, we're getting all the information that we could. The doctors came by the bedside and listening. She was very coarse. Um, and I mean, I spent hours on this lady trying to resolve. And finally, I want to say like around three, she was like resolved. Um, by the time I did in, in early initially in that morning, you can go ahead and call the MRT. If you know you came onto a shift and your patient is in distress and there was medication already given, at this point, you can already go ahead and call an MRT. Sometimes you don't want to wait because then your patient kind of doesn't have that support um, from the team because some people can think of something else that you might have didn't try. But in this point, when I called MRT, they came and it was kind of like, Sierra, what you need us for? Like, literally, you did everything for your patient. Like, I mean, and then they was like, wait a minute, 
and it was seeing me still moving. I'm telling them everything. History, okay, she had a ploy, uh, some fusion. She had a, she had fluid in her lungs. They're still pinning these labs. This is going on. And they were just looking at me like, wait a minute. The lady had to stop and was like, do you want to work for the ICU? Like, I'm like, we were all looking like, and mind you, the girl, one of the girls I used to work with on the med search side, this was her first day in ICU. So she was giving me looks like, if looks could kill, she was giving me them looks like, but um, she was like, I was like, uh, I would love to join the team if that's what God wanted me to do. Um, they was just like, well, how long you been here? And they couldn't believe I'd just been an RN for six months. They was just like, literally, you did everything. And wow, like, I mean, your patient is stable. I was like, thank you. I mean, and the only reason why I felt good about that is because in these pandemic times, MRT team is all over the hospital. We have one team, guys, and sometimes there's like eight to 10 MRTs on the same floor. Emergencies happening everywhere. And so it's very important to assess your patient. You do not want to call the MRT. They're going to ask you tons of questions and you want to be like, uh, I don't know. Um, I didn't look. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you want to get as much information from your patient as possible. So we know that we're treating the patient correctly. You want to give the doctor a chance to transfer that patient to a higher level of care. In this case, my patient wound up staying with me because she was, I got her stayed well enough to stay with me. And she was so happy. She did not want to go to the ICU. Um, and I was happy for her and the family. So, and that's another thing. The family must be notified as well if you're going to transfer your patient. Anytime your patient gets transferred to a high level of care or there's something that happens, the doctor should be reaching out to that family hey, just letting you know that X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. Um, and another tip, guys, is when working with surgical patients, this is like something rare, but it still relates to uh, chest pains. Most of the times, patients who are have cardiac history and they're going into a surgery, they cardiac meds are being held for a specific amount of time so that they can go into surgery and get their procedure. So they're without their cardiac meds for 48 hours or whatever, or 24 hours. And this is also can cause a lot of cardiac uh, patients to come unresponsive or chest pains or something crazy because they're constantly not being on their cardiac meds. And so the doctors, um, and I had mentioned that I had another MRT that first of all, wasn't even my patient. We was giving reports to each other. Next day I know I heard a boom, patient became unresponsive. Automatically, for some reason, I knew the patient was a new AFib. Don't ask me how I know these things. God gave me this gift to pick up on these different uh, diagnosis. It's like, so before the patient have a, a crazy event, I already can tell you what's going to happen with the patient. I can already tell you that something's going down. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but that's my gift. That And God is literally moving through me. And this is what he's telling me to do. And so I'm nothing special like y'all. I'm just brand new out of school. I mean, been LPN for four years, but God literally gives me, gave me, give this, give this to me, this gift. And, um, I automatically, when this patient hit the floor, I was like, he's a, no, he's a cardiac patient, he's an AFib, and I was working on a surgical floor at, uh, at the time, and I was like, he is off his cardiac meds. And it took the doctors two hours to figure that out. They was like, um, 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 I could hit him at the computer, then I heard the doctor say, oh my God, he's been off his blood thinners for this amount of time, and this and that, because he has his procedure. So, I was like, you know happy and gave glory to God of course but we was about to be doing some pumping on the chest with him because he and a lot of times when your patient is on a cardiac unit they have a cardiac monitor on keep that cardiac monitor on sometimes I don't even our policy if they have it on they don't even go to the back like go take a shower or stuff like that and I know that sounds nasty but for some reason the bathroom is one place that the cardiac patients always go unresponsive and um I don't know what it is about the bathroom um especially if they're doing any activity with PT, OT, uh, if they're in the room, go and take a shower, use the bathroom, their heart rate shoots up, they go into SBT. Um, so cardiac patients are very sensitive to activities. As soon as they start moving around, you will see a big difference on their monitor. All the, the alarms are going off. And so I'm very strict with my monitor staying on my patient. And I explained to them, like, look, this is a portable monitor. Feel free to walk around. I don't want them to feel like they're in jail. But um, when cardiac patients, they can be very intimidating because they have multiple risk factors involved with them. And so they they look fine and they're just sweet as pie, but then their heart rates look a mess. Their rhythms look a mess. And you're like, wait a minute, I just left that room. They VT, like VT. 
Like, they just always a mess. And so you always want to dig deeper. Find out about your patients. Sometimes patients are, haven't been able to get their meds in these hard pandemic times. Patients are, like, I had a patient that was supposed to get the meds delivered to the home and never got there but a week later. And she wound up in the hospital, almost died. Um, and she had ammonia levels that was through the roof. And, you know, you give lactulose to that and let them poop it out, poop it out, poop it out. Her mental status was, she went from nonverbal to talking too much. Like, she was just like, duh, 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 duh. Just like, oh, my God. So... Anyway, guys, so that's basically what I can give you about chest pains. Like I said, if you're new and you're like, oh my God, my patient's in distress, just call for MRT. Automatically start grabbing your EKG. Automatically look at the history and start assessing. Ask those questions. Those few questions will help determine what medication should be appropriate, if they're even on any, if maybe they didn't even know they had a cardiac history with something. And sometimes patients are non-compliant with their medications and that's why they have all these symptoms. Um, and like I said, you need orders for oxygen. Some people really think that's like a big thing. Oh, let me put them on 10 liters. No, like the most I increase it is to three. But if I do increase it, I'll let my doctor know. But you have to have a really good relationship with your doctor for them to trust you to go ahead and do what you need to do before they come see the patient. Why? Because they have hundreds and hundreds of other patients, right? And so they trust me for some reason because of all these different saves that God has been doing that they just like trust me too much and they ask me like, okay, what should I order? What should I do? What should you think? And kind of like, I all have to remind them like, look, I'm still a new grad. Even though I've got some skills, I'm still learning, I'm still a new grad. Um, this is an inappropriate question. Um, even though I, if I think I have the answer, cause sometimes you think you know something and you don't know, it really can be something else that's causing somebody else to have chest pain. Another last tip is to always ask them if they have anxiety, uh, some type of mental health uh, related issues, because a lot of times people are having panic attacks and don't not even know they're having panic attacks. And they're like, you're thinking it's totally cardiac related. And it could be mental. It could be that they're just having a panic attack, anxiety. They're thinking about something, you know, being in the hospital is scary. And so you always want to assess that. And that way, that's great information you can give to the doctor. And they can consult the psych doctor. And that way, the patient can get the overall help, uh, help rather than you just focusing on chest pains, right? Because sometimes it's more than just the chest pains. But move quickly. If you're new and you're like, hey, I don't know how to do none of the stuff you're talking about, just call an MRT on your patient. At least somebody can come. And while they're coming, automatically listen to your lung sounds automatically like i said assess your patient look at their skin color are they pale um you know are they holding on to their shirt because patients who can't tell you they itch because they're in so much pain sometimes they can't even talk um they're holding their chest you know they grimacing they mm, and you can see their exact location of where that chest pain is happening automatically grab that ekg machine and say hey look and look at the ekg to see if it's normal abnormal um, just for your own knowledge, but let the doctor interpret that. Um, if they have, if they under cardiac, get come page the cardiac doctor. You shouldn't be paging the kidney doctor. In the hospital, it gets so crazy, and sometimes it can be confusing because they have so many doctors underneath one patient. You want to make sure you consult with the the right doctor, page the right uh, specialty doctor, right? Um, so yeah so hopefully you guys this video was super super lit helpful um like i said i hope i hope i didn't leave anything out um just look at your policy when it comes to chest pains this is something that's happening all the time it's common um sometimes chest pains can be very mild and can be something very major and most of the times these patients are going to go get an echo done the doctor's probably going to order an echo um to see what's really going on if they what's the ef um, ejection fraction, um, you know, maybe they'll repeat some enzyme tests. So be prepared to do some lab work, be prepared to do an EKG. Um, so you want to go ahead and have somebody grab things in the room. Now, what I do when I have chest pains, I do not leave my patient. I normally stay by them and have other people grab me stuff. And that way it gives them a sense of comfort. And I'm like, look, I'm not leaving. I know this lady came in to do your echo. Or I know this lady's coming in to do the chest x-ray. I'm right here. I'm not leaving. And that gives them a sense of security that somebody is there. God forbid they do get unresponsive. And so I always stay with my patient and I just tell people, hey. And another thing you can check that a doctor told me to check is always check their bladder, make sure they're not holding any urine. In this case, for my patient, she had a periwick in place. So I'm like, that's a non-factor because she's urinating. We'll see the urine. Um, so she was just like, you know, make sure they pee in and they're pooping. Um, that can also be, a, that can also relieve chest pains. Um, one time guys, I had chest pains from somebody else and I was able to relieve it with a lidocaine patch and I put the lidocaine patch in the chest and it took his chest pain away. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs>
I don't know what I was thinking, but it worked. And everybody's looking at me like, how did she do that? I was like, I don't know. Again, this is all God. I mean, I just, when I go to work, I just pray on it that I, you know, able to listen to what the God is telling me to do and follow policy, you guys. Because if you follow policy, then you'll be protected if something was to go on or you was to miss something. And again, know your role because you're the nurse, you're not the doctor. Me, I'm planning on, guys, my plan is to be a nurse practitioner. I love to have my own patients and love to find out what's wrong. I currently, in the past, went to pre-med school to be a doctor, and they were suggesting we do PA. And I don't know if I want to be a PA, but um, I do want to be a nurse practitioner. I want to practice independently, but that's going to take lots of experience because, guys, everybody is different. You're dealing with people from all over the world, from different cultures, right, different backgrounds, different beliefs on wellness and sickness. And so, um, yeah, guys, so continue to support me. We almost at 200. I'm trying to reach my goal. Um, I hope this video was super helpful. I'm currently about to pack up and leave. We had an amazing time here in the mountains. It's currently snowing. Um, and yeah. And so look out for those little perks for your healthcare workers out there that's working. Like Starbucks is starting to get back out free coffee. I got a feeling, God forbid, this may take a while, this pandemic. So make sure that when your patients are being transferred to you, if you work in a hospital or whatever, make sure you always ask for a COVID negative exam or always look through their lab work and look for that. Because most of the time, ER patients are always trying to give us now unstable patients because they are so overflowed with patients. They're trying to send them just anywhere. So all if it's an active chest pain and you're on the med search floor, that's another tip. You do not have to take active chest pain. You can access.